So, Carrie, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your experience. So, four months ago, my team and I repaired your right superior canal dehiscence. Tell me what it was like for you before surgery. What, what led you to choose to have surgery? So about six months before your amazing team uh, performed surgery on my right side, I was a perfectly healthy 29-year-old young woman, and I started getting dizzy. Mm -hmm. And I started hearing my foot strikes and my, um, my own voice. I could hear my eyes move. I could hear my intestines. Um, loud noises would make me fall over. I walked by a busker who was playing the saxophone and blurted into my ear and I fell into a tree. Whenever a fire truck went by, I would fall over. That's not normal. <laughs> and um, when things got really bad, I even, um, you know, moving my head would make me dizzy. Mm -hmm. I would try and walk into the street to cross the street and I tumbled and I nearly fell into the street. So that's when things got really bad. I went to my general practitioner. She sent me to an ENT and un in under eight minutes, the ENT said, I think you have a dehiscence in your superior wow. canal. That's lucky to get a diagnosis yeah. that quickly. So when, when you saw me and we talked about what it is and what the surgery would involve, what were your concerns about, about choosing to have surgery? My concerns really were, how long would I have to be out of work? Was this really the right choice? I'd never even broken my leg, let alone gone in for a cranial surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I was really worried about anesthesia. That was mm -hmm. a big anxiety of mine. Um, but by the time I got to you, things were so bad that when a worldwide expert says you need this surgery, you get the surgery. So what was helpful to you in, in making the decision to go forward with it? I think a lot of it was your um, confidence in how appropriate of a patient I was for the surgery that you were going to perform. And also I got connected with another patient who had had two surgeries before and she was very helpful walking me through small steps that maybe a, a surgeon wouldn't think were helpful. She told me the surgery room is white and cold. That felt really comforting to me to know you're gonna go to an, into a room, it's gonna be cold. It's, gonna, it's normal for you to start to shiver when you get on an operating table, you know, to hear those patient stories. I hope we kept you warm. <laughs> I did get okay. warm after the fact. Um, but it was really helpful for me to hear from somebody, particularly another young woman who had gone through the surgery before. Right. No, I think that's really important. I mean, we've got a lot of experience and we know it from our side, mm -hmm. but I try to get patients to communicate with each other as much as we can under the privacy rules to be peer counselors. Mm -hmm. So we gave you a lot of information before mm -hmm. surgery. Did mm -hmm. you feel it was too much or did we prepare you well enough for surgery? I think you did. I think your team really prepared me well for surgery. I think my natural proclivity is to also to research as much as possible and some people aren't don't want to do that. They don't need to do that. Um, but I read every study I could get my hands on. I read every patient story I could find, every news article that was about the condition. And those those stories were very helpful to me as well. What would you tell a patient if they called you asking, should I have this surgery? Talk to your doctor, <laughs> find the best expert you can, mm -hmm. and talk to other patients who have had the surgery. What was their surgery like? What were their results? Um, and it's, it's a big decision to make, but don't wait to see a doctor. What you're feeling is real. That's another thing that I would tell patients mm -hmm. is that this is such a unique, strange condition mm -hmm. that you have to trust your own body and your own instincts and to go to a doctor as soon as possible. Right, right. <clears throat> so there's a big internet community mm -hmm. now devoted to superior canal dehiscence syndrome. Mm -hmm. What was your experience with that before surgery? Was it helpful or was it confusing? It was helpful. I think some people um, have a tendency to um, focus inward and they don't want to tell their story. They don't want to talk about it. But knowing hundreds of people who are going through the same thing is very comforting. And particularly for superior canal dehiscence, I think the the symptom spectrum is so wide. Some people will have this, but not others. Some people will have right. this, but not others. And just to get a perspective on what people are going through was very helpful. Right. Carrie, once you decided to have the surgery, tell us about what kind of plans you had to make leading up to it. First, I talked to my family. Then I went into my boss and said, I'm gonna to need to take eight weeks off of work. I need to get brain surgery. And the first question was, how are you doing? Is it okay? You know, and they were very generous about mm -hmm. it. Um, and then I went into my doctor and I was having a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, I had never even broken my leg before, let alone had brain surgery and I was having panic attacks. And right. I went into my doctor and she prescribed me an anti-anxiety medication, which was 
very, very comforting, very helpful, which I did just for the few weeks before surgery and then went off it after surgery. Okay. And it was very helpful. So, Carrie, how long did it take you to feel certain that you wanted to have surgery and then schedule the surgery? After I first went to my first ENT appointment, I was at the bottom of the barrel. I was mm -hmm. barely making it into work. I couldn't move my head without falling over. I couldn't drive anymore. And for a normally healthy 29-year-old person, I had to find a fix. Right. And when you suggested the surgery, that was the option and that was what I needed to do. And I just felt very at ease when mm -hmm. I came in to see you. And it was very comforting to know that you had a very high confidence level for how my surgery would turn out. So it's been about four months now. How are you doing and are you glad you had the surgery? I'm absolutely glad I did the surgery. I'm four months out and I think I'm about 95% back to normal. I do get dizzy maybe once a week, but it was 200 times a day before the surgery, so it's gotten a lot better. Um, I'm still a little bit fatigued, but other than that, all of my sound symptoms were gone the moment I woke up from surgery. Right. The dizziness took a little bit of time, but through ocular and physical therapy, it worked itself out. Great, great. Well. I'm happy that you had the surgery here. I'm happy we were able to get you back to get you back to your life. Thanks. <laughs>